Welcome, guys. Episode 17. Super happy. We're so happy to have you, Mike. Appreciate, oh, you. appreciate you coming it. out. Now we got the second half of Spark. Yep. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, so obviously we're going to dive in first to just a little bit about you and then we'll, we'll dive into the real stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you first of all for having me. Anytime. I, Anytime. Uh, I remember when you, uh, you reached out to me, you commented on one of the things on, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think I was, it's the first time I was going to Florida it was back in November. Yes. So I started following your personal page, this yeah, page. So appreciate I'm it. happy to see, you know, 17 episodes in. <laughs> thank you. And I'm happy to finally be a guest as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. But, uh, yeah, a bit about myself and the president and uh, co-founder. So the second half of Spark Financial Group. Yeah. Uh, my background. Uh, is accounting that's what I have awesome. as my specialist in accounting yeah. and uh, yeah we used to work at the bank worked in nightlife as well uh, blended the two together created Spark Financial Group so Beautiful. mortgage wise it's been nine years because as soon as wow. I got to the bank I moved my way up quickly from being a teller. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been nine years. My team likes to say I've done my 10,000 hours of mortgages. <laughs> it's all I do all See day, that, every yeah. day. Uh, yeah, and just just love what I do. Love growing the team. Love working with them. And I've always, I've always had a passion for finance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, just love that. That's the, the space I'm in. For sure. That's awesome. And so you have so much, I think, so much knowledge from the accounting side of it than just the mortgage side of it. That definitely is a benefit in your business to have from, from university or, you know, starting at a young age to now. It's yeah. probably so much, you know, made it a really eye-opening experience for you. It is. Like, uh, I, I tell people all the time, I, you know, I have, I have three degrees. The one yeah. that I actually went to school for <laughs> and then TD where I worked at the bank yeah. and, uh, and then nightlife. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just a bit about that. You know, yeah, the first job it. I had was was at the bank. First real job uh-huh, I uh-huh. had was at the bank. So I was your corporate job, and I always recommend cool. that to anybody. Yeah. Uh, because, to get into it. Yeah, because you know, you I, I learned a lot from that. You learn mm-hmm. about debt, bill payments. You you see the real world. It's not yes. all you know rainbows and lollipops. Yeah. <laughs> you see people in debt, what they're going through to pay, sure. pay these bills. For sure. So that was you know that that second degree, and then the third degree, the nightlife. It, yeah. Again, it wasn't for me. It wasn't so much about the party. Again, yeah. just the hustle, making making money. I can relate to that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was the same thing it was learning about that business mm-hmm. uh you know nick took me under his wing and that and that's where we met wow awesome. and uh yeah you learned the the street side of it you yeah the corporate the street yeah. side two the, different the, very the, the yeah. degree so uh yeah so that's why i love to say i got uh, i got wow. three different degrees going oh, it's on. true <laughs> it's true man yeah you learn you learn a bit of uh, both of everything and that's why i always recommend like i said the bank to people because that really gave that good footing because school teaches you Mm-hmm. A good amount, but school, you know, one of the quotes I love, yeah. uh, it's, it's just to make sure you show up and follow a schedule. Yes. But with the bank, it taught me again. I'm dealing with real world, pe- real world people. For sure, every day. They, they're you know they're in debt. They're having trouble with things. They're getting upset at you. Yeah. How you do you respond that to that? Exactly. Stuff. It's not easy. They, you know, yeah. having those people skills. For sure. And that's why I like that we brought the spark. And I think yeah. spark has that 50 50 in it as well it exactly was that uh, that background from the finance world from the banking yeah uh, especially with our employees that worked at the bank yeah and then we have that nightlife hospitality the white glove service we yes. talk about yes that we brought in as well so i amazing. think that's the big piece for us that it is makes us different it's a big connection there yeah for sure when i saw that i came to your event there the florida one and i i saw the pamphlet of the, the concierge mm-hmm. service and i was going through it you know it, it's from an outsider perspective, it's such a smart and beneficial thing to have it all in one pack for people because, like you said, like to understand the people skill side of it and for people to, you know, open up to you about their debt and all these different situations financially. Right. Having it all under one roof is it, it helps a lot. It's super yeah. beneficial people, for people. People want that one stop shop. Yeah. Once they once they trust that person, like I was a exactly. financial advisor at the bank. Okay. They they trusted me, so I talked about their bank accounts, yeah. investing, mm-hmm. RSPs, visas, credit. They want yeah. you're, you're trusted. They want you exactly. to give them the guidance, and that's that's what we've sort of built at Spark now. And that's what the concierge program is as well. It's like yeah. yes, our main bread and butter is mortgages. For sure. We want to be that all in one for you. I have clients. They still call me and ask me, "Hey, like, yeah. I'm gonna go apply for this visa. What do you yeah, think?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. At What's the end of the day, uh, we're in it for service. And yeah. I always love to take on those calls because it's always long term. We That's never awesome. say exactly. We never say no exactly. to a client. Yeah. Even, it doesn't matter how small the mortgage is, how big it is, or if it's ten years down the road. There's yeah. always something you're gonna gain for sure. In that relationship for sure. That's awesome. And so to get into a little bit, Mike, when when you had that vision uh, from going from the bank as a teller, yeah. how long did it take you to realize, okay, now it's my turn. Now I want to kind of do my own thing. Uh, I got to say, I think I've always had the entrepreneurial, uh, you know, that vision. I- inside of me and that yeah. vision, even to go further from the bank. Yeah. Uh, 
it just it was always about the hustle for me. So awesome. like whatever I could get my hands on, I wanted yeah, to sell. Exactly. The first big thing for me was those balance bracelets. No way. Yeah, I got okay. them. I found I a guy. I those. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're huge. So I got a guy. Okay. Literally, I was I was buying them for five cents a piece. Nice. And I was selling them for, them for twenty to twenty five bucks a piece. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they did go so for that, was, that much. Yeah. So that yes. was my first taste yes. of like. Yeah. real money and that yeah. was that was like grade eight going into grade nine nice uh i used Prime to sell time. yeah i used to sell like you know the scarf like chanel scarf stuff yeah. like that yeah i used to i had those websites you know hopefully the e-commerce stuff? yeah yeah this is yeah. a junior so i was no no not e-commerce <laughs> no? i used to rip movies and i'd burn them on dvds and no stuff. way yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was like a flea market yeah yeah, flea yeah, market. yeah. <laughs> but wow. it just, yeah it's like whatever whatever i could get my hands on i could sell so yeah you i always saw myself as a sales it. person yeah, yeah. And then uh you know i had my paper route i was doing i was timekeeping nice. i was teaching kids uh skiing lessons hockey lessons cool but uh, and i think that's what drew me even to the promoting side with the nightlife is again yeah just selling the service exactly. and that's where it became more of a service than just like than that just, hustle yeah. selling like that balance transaction and stuff yeah. like that yeah so yeah so that entrepreneurial mindset you know it's it's just i guess it's always been in me for sure but uh yeah with the bank i started the bank I, again great first job but i'm like this corporate setting is not for me okay in the sense that i wanted to create my own your own corporate setting yes. and i had the goal for tw- uh, that by 2020 i was okay. gonna be working for myself that was my thing yeah and like we were talking about off camera I started yeah. school. I've always been, you know, studious yeah. kid, good grades and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, something just clicked when I started university. It's like, wow, that's maybe when I don't want to go down. I was telling you about corporate law. Exactly. It's not yeah. my path to do it eight is. more years of school. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, let me and just get fair. in, that's get fair. out, get yeah. that degree, and start my own. So exactly. once once I had finished school, uh, end of 2019, yeah, quit the bank. Wow. Uh, Nick and I were. I was working my ranks up in, in nightlife. And yeah. Nick and I had uh, worked on a couple projects together. Cool. And he had he had his kids, a couple kids already, and he's like, oh, I yeah? wanna, wow. he's like, I want to venture out. He was already exit strategy of his portfolio. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I said, I'm done with the bank. I said, I quit today. That's what I called. Him. No I like, way. You I said didn't that. tell him I was quitting. I said, I already quit. Wow. Resignations in. Wow. What are we doing next? Let's yeah. do something together. Yeah. And that's when Spark came to be. Yeah. Because we we weren't. Nightlife, we could already tell, was dying out. And yeah. then, you know, funny enough, four months later, COVID happens. Exactly. So it was, you know, New wow. Year's Eve at our Liberty Grand Party. Yeah. Him and I are in the green room. We just got the licenses for the mortgage uh, uh, agent course a couple weeks uh, prior. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we said, let's, you know, that's it. Full force. New, New Year's is over. Let's let's sell this, whatever we got. Let's, you know, exit strategy out of this uh, yeah. nightlife portfolio. And yeah. And let's go full force. And then March, COVID happens. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah, yeah. Like, Wow. Well, thank God wow. for, for that guy. Exactly. <laughs> it's almost beneficial. Yeah. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's, that's where Spark came to be. And it was, it was again, wow. my passion for finance, love yeah. investing, yeah. love anything to do with finance, mortgages, helping people out. Wow. That's what it is. It's, it's helping people out. It is. And At that's the end of I found the day. mortgages yeah. I really loved. And that's where Spark came to be. Wow. That's cool. I, I love hearing about this side of it. It's awesome. You know, you see the business running, but yeah. you know, seeing the the foundation of how you guys started it is is really cool. Yeah. So it's awesome. And it just they just uh, you know snowballed from there. Yeah. August twenty August because I mean, crazy memory. So August yeah. third, twenty twenty one, hired our first employee, and now we're at twenty two employees wow. in two different countries. Wow. And I was just doing an interview before I came here. So yes. Soon to be twenty three. Somebody yeah. else started last week. And we're in week. Calgary last week. I saw. Yeah, yeah. I was in Calgary because yeah. again, just always looking at future growth. Exactly. Exactly. That's because everybody's awesome. like, what are you doing out in Calgary? Well, I was yeah. getting a couple inquiries about purchasing a property there. Cool. Hey, do you guys do mortgages there? We're loud on social media. So people yeah, are like, very loud. Yeah. I'm going to come to you. Yeah. And so I, I said to Joe, he's, he heads off my underwriting. He's like my right-hand man. Yeah. I said, let's pack our bags. Let's go to Calgary. <laughs> For sure. And with realtors, lenders, brokers, I want to understand what's going on there. Yeah. We're back. Posted it. People saw we're there. We already got 13 deals wow. in the pipeline for it. Good for you. you know I mean? Congrats, man. So, yeah, thank that's, you. That's awesome. In that short time span? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> was that the your motor. first time there, too? First time there, yeah. yeah? No, I no, I knew nobody. Wow. It was two weeks ago. I said, Joe, I said, here's my schedule. I said, I got yeah. <laughs> trips coming up. I'm back and forth in Florida. Yeah. I got that big one in November. I said, yeah. it's now or never in two weeks exactly. to go to Calgary. Exactly. Let's do it. So, and Put yeah, it he did a great job. He hit up a bunch of lenders, realtors, all that. Made yeah. The connections. Yeah. And uh, yeah, even looking at a couple of investment properties for ourselves as well. We're wow. always looking to grow our real estate. For sure, property. for sure. It's beneficial. Yeah. Especially when you're in the business, you know what's exactly. right. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Cool. And so tell me, Mike, when it came to like, uh, you, you were exiting the nightlife, let's say. I remember I asked Nick this too. I wanted to get your perspective on it. How, did, was there ever like a lot of, you know, let's say skills or experiences from that sector that, that you took into this one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that goes back to the whole two degree thing I was talking yeah. about. It's, it's again, the like we talked about the bank, it was that real world, it was people's troubles. Yeah. You know, you have to act quick. And I 
what I took from there was the hospitality. For sure. Uh, you know, the customer's always first. That was at the For bank, sure. of course, as well. Yeah. But with nightlife, again, the customer's always first. I'm servicing exactly. people. Yeah. They're coming on my bus or yeah. limo, come downtown. Uh, you know, Nick always taught me when they're at the door, walk yeah. them in, the VIP guests. Yeah. We're at the booth. So I'd always go around to the booth. So I was never wow. really drinking, even the comp bottles we got. Go yeah, around, yeah, yeah. pour out shots for these guys. So nice. I, I take from what I learned from there was just really that real world business and also that hospitality and that white glove service yeah. that we bring over to Spark that yeah. we're all about. That's awesome. That's awesome. Sorry. Here. So no, I'll just do that and then yeah, I'll go back <laughs> into it. <laughs> Someone took this off today. There we go. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Yeah, so I was, I'll just yeah. say that again so you have it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what I, what I took from it was really that, that hospitality, hospitality, that white glove service. Uh, you nice. Know, it's just about the client. At the end yeah. of the day, yeah, you're in the nightclub or you're exactly. in a the basement there, you know, partying, but yeah. it's it's still service. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. Because it's it's like I say with a mortgage. Any mortgage agent can take the course and offer a mortgage. Yeah. Anybody could the simple open up a nightclub and it. offer a nightclub. It's yes. what's going to be different. Exactly. Of, of course, the experience, exactly. but also the hospitality. For it. sure. For sure, and I, I'm I'm more than well, uh, what's the word? I'm more than well confident to say that I could just from an outside perspective that Spark provides that in yeah, any thank way. You. I could thank see you. it. Even when I came to the office the other day, it was just like just the way you guys are set up. I'm like, wow! Like for that short amount of time, like you're saying, from COVID to now with yeah, the amount of years. people, that's huge, man. That's huge for a company that I've known many companies 30, 40 years in the business to get that many employees in check. It's not easy. Yeah, no, no, it's <laughs> it's, it's not. But it's just big vision, big picture. It is going for that billion dollar yes. valuation. That's awesome. And uh, we're not we're not greedy guys. So no, anything we've made, you know, we're injecting back in our business. Exactly. We want to see the business grow. Yeah. And we want to continue to uh, you know help our employees grow and yeah provide incentive for them for sure. And so tell me, Mike, from your perspective as well, when it comes to collaboration with other mortgage agents, let's say, or just people in the industry as well, real estate agents and so forth, how important do you think it is from your finance background to be collaborative? I think it's huge. I think that's a big misconception and something that's missing in our industry. Yeah. And I think that's sort of something we've disrupted Yeah. Uh, or been disruptive of is that collab because yeah. everybody's very like, you know, hold their cards yes, to themselves. exactly. Realtors, exactly. like, you know, even just the realtors uh, yeah. with our podcast, with What Would It Cost, we okay. did we did a launch event or sorry, like a premiere event when we yeah. went on TLN. Yes. And yeah. someone said to us, it's amazing that you have all these different realtors in this room and yeah. people are talking, they're interacting, but I said, but for me and Nick, it's just like, yeah. well, that's how it should be. It should. Because in Nightlife, yeah. maybe there's another point to bring over is like, we collaborate with other promoters. You're awesome. throwing a big party. Yes. It wasn't just me and NRG and you sell 5,000 tickets. Yeah. It's like, no, we Everybody. need to bring another promoter. For sure. And I think that's what was missing with the real estate and yes. the mortgage side is that it's again, yeah, cards to yourself. This yes. is my business. Like, no, just share yes. the love, share the wealth. Exactly. And that's what Nick and I are all about. And that's yeah. why, you know, we realtors are the backbones of our industry. For sure. So we're not, oh, I'm specific with this one realtor. Yeah. Some yeah. brokers are like that and teach their own. You know, yeah. that's, that's great. It works for the business. Mm -hmm. But for us, we let them know, like, you know, we're not exclusive with anybody. We're exactly. here to service all your clients. Exactly. And treat you the same way I would treat that realtor over there. Yeah. And same with brokers. So yeah. We tell them all the time, we're open to it. Yeah. There's stuff that I can't do that someone else can mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I always love helping other brokers and, and working with them. I'd rather make some money than no money at all by yeah, the yeah, deal. Yeah, exactly. It's not about the biggest yeah. deal. Exactly. It's, it's the big picture of everything. Yeah. You know, don't, yeah. uh, you know, that's the one piece of advice I could give is like, don't burn your bridges with, yeah. with, uh, you know, the ego and that petty mindset. Yes. Like, no, this is mine. I got to keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be honest. I had that issue at first too. For that's, sure. That's how I, I think thought. a lot of people have that. It's like, well, this is, this is my client. This is mine. I got to do yeah. this. But it's like, no, I got to understand that you're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. That. Yeah. With that mindset. Exactly. For sure. For sure. It's a long term, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. And so um, now running the business this long as a, as a part owner co-founder how how's it been balancing yourself as an owner <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, it's, it's a, that's a tricky one there yeah uh because you wear so many hats for sure and i'll be completely so much transparent. responsibility my yeah responsibility but my, my issue is too is delegating because mm. i've been always so much I, i've had many other little companies and startups for sure. I've done for low. sure nice so this is my first big corporation that yeah. I've, I've done and yeah. uh so yeah it's just hard you know letting go i was just laughing about it with uh Bianca, who's our office manager before yeah. we left, it's like, you know, I'm still letting go of her ordering the Costco water bottles. Oh, yeah? That was my thing. You know, it was just me and Nick who started yeah. off. Yeah. I, I, you know, I watched the you finances and everything. Yeah. So that's like, that's my part. So I got to say the big thing to anybody, like the advice is just let go, delegate, hire the right people. Yep. But yeah, the, the first thing is having an awesome team. Yeah. 
I know that you know even me being here right now uh, for the files that are going through, I have full awesome. confidence that my client can't get me or they I've instructed them to contact yeah. Joe, Michelle, Natalie, Teddy, whoever it is yeah. that's underwriting them that they got you know for sure they're full, covered. the full service just like they would be yeah. discussing with me. So that's the first thing is that's having great. having the right employees, the right team, the right family 100%. that you trust. Hundred uh, percent. Because you don't want to build this clientele and you know work as hard as we did. In, the, in those first couple of years, yeah. just throw it all away by giving the, by having the wrong person yes. in front of you. And the second thing is is time management. Yes, it's huge. Um, I work with the same life coach that Nick was working with, uh, nice. Zark. Yeah, and that was that was a big piece for me was time management because I was there, again so many hats I was wearing. Yeah, pulled left, right, center. Yeah, I got Florida going on. You know, yes. Alberta. I'm out there. Yes. Uh, over here, it's huge. Private lending. Yeah, so it's just really time blocking those days. Organizing. And knowing, okay. It, you're not going to always stick to it. I always yeah. I like this, even with my employees. Things happen. Because I see they, they need help with that. And I'm yeah. like, you got to look at fixed and variable. Here's your mm-hmm. fixed. Like, okay, we're going to work on these files yes. at this time. We're going to do these calls at this time. Yeah. But the variables are you're closing a file. A lawyer could call me right now. They could call me at yeah. 9 a.m. You don't know. I can't I can't not you answer the phone. Yeah. I'm like, well, my time block is <laughs> 11 to 12 for yeah. calls. Exactly. So that's why, that's why I try to train my employees as well is that. Yes. Don't stick to that fixed schedule. It's yeah. never ever going to work. It won't happen. Not in the industry that we're in. Yeah, no. You know I mean, for a restaurant, sure. you know. For sure. Maybe in here's some when these sectors. Here's people are coming. I was yes. in the nightlife. Yes. The bus leaves now. Yeah. People show it's up all here. It's all time. But this is different. Like yeah. I said, the, you know, deals are closing. Yeah. Clients it takes more call time. You. Yeah. You know, I, I work on Saturdays as well because I got clients that work till five, six yes. o'clock at night. Yeah. They don't want to come see me after and talk about their no. finance for an hour. No. So no. I leave Saturdays open for them. Come yeah. to the office, call me whenever you like. Yeah. It's just what you got, it's the service they're looking for. Yeah, for sure. They, they, a lot, I think of clients too they get turned off a lot in any industry when they don't hear a response and it comes a weekend and they're like oh they're going to get back to me Monday type yeah, of thing communication's huge. yeah it is huge. it is it is it's very true that's awesome yeah Awesome. And so, Mike, now, you know, running the company, you guys are scaling. You're in Florida. How was that process for you? Florida, it was uh, it was great. It was a fun process. Yeah. Because, again, like, you know, with, with myself and Nick, we're, we like to say, you know, shoot uh, or what is it? Ready, shoot, aim. You yes. know what I mean? Yes, yes, so, yes, 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 yes. Go. Aim at, just, just go. <laughs> just go and for it. Hey, you're and that's awesome. You're going to lose some money doing that. You're going to waste some time. But you're going to learn. But I just find, yeah, you're going to learn, learn right but away. you be the most proactive. And for sure. with Florida, I'll tell you right now, the reason why we even built Spark Concierge yeah. is because it took us a year and a half to figure out how to get there. Yeah. You can't Google it. Yeah, you can't. exactly. I called the lawyers to call the accountant. I called the accountant yeah. to call the lawyer. Yeah. There was nobody that did this, and we're the first brokerage that's licensed sure. down there. For we're sure. not co-broker anything. We're licensed. Yourself. It's on the ground. Yeah. Ourselves. Yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was tricky. It was a lot of long nights. Again, having the right people in place. For sure. And just going through it, figuring it out yourself. You know, yeah. like uh, we laugh about it at the event. You know, we sent Niels down, who's our managing partner yes. down there. Yeah. And uh, you got stopped at the board. So where the hell are you going? No you way. Know? No <laughs> way. So we're all set. You know, this is February. <laughs> this is like January 29th. The launch is February 13th. And you got stopped? I got 200 people coming February 10th. And they're yeah. like, where are you going? This guy's got a big U-Haul behind them no. with his truck. And they're like, what the hell's going on here? And he's like, oh, I'm going to work in the U.S. You know? So like, it's just it's, it's, it's experience. Like, yeah. you know, shout out Niels. Thanks for yeah. taking that shot for us. Wow. But, but it's it's what it is. got to figure it out because they're, even with the lawyer, we weren't yes. getting the right information. Yeah, that we you need. weren't. Unless you're the there. The other lawyer that we called out to the fact, he's like, what the hell are you guys doing? Yeah. But Didn't understand you're not going to know who yeah. you're doing. So, yeah. So that's 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 what Florida was. and But wow. we're really happy uh, that we went through that because yeah. it, it, you know, no pun intended, sparked a new business. Yeah, we're a spark concierge. Yeah, because it we is. talk to so many clients. Uh, they own so many properties, especially yeah. on this Vaughn Woodbridge yes. Toronto area. They have so many properties. A lot of there. investment properties. But a lot of them don't even have mortgages on it because, again, they had wow. no idea how to buy it. Wow. They just bought cash. Wow. So I'm dealing with lawyers that are like, these How are educated people. Yes, and they like, don't understand that. They're like, I don't have the time. Yeah. It's not even understanding, but it's like, I don't even have the time to, do, to work to go, with it. To go figure out this mortgage. Wow. Again, you call your accountant, he says, do this. You call yes. the lawyer, he says, talk uh, to your accountant. It's even like I was doing the corporation. I yeah. called the accountant to do it. He's like, ah, oh, talk to a lawyer about yes. this. So it's always back and forth. Yes. And then people think, oh, I got to get a mortgage either from TD or RBC. Yeah, the main no, two. No, there's whatever. lenders down there yes. that yeah. are more flexible for what you need. For sure. So it's, yeah, that's what concierge is, is just building that bridge mm-hmm. uh, for assisting the overall. Mm-hmm. Immigration, um, accounting, yep. open up a corporation, yep. moving companies, pick yep. up at the airport, yep. show you around, realtors, 
We got a guy for even home automation. Yeah, home GC. automation. I saw that. Yeah. I look at us. We're like the GCs of your financing. <laughs> Pretty much. We got all the yes. we got all the trades. Yes. We'll help you. Exactly. We'll hold your hand. Myself and Nick bought a property down there as well. Yeah. You know, see, we're gonna see ourselves how it is. Wow. Exactly. You guys are putting your own your own capital into it. That's how we've always been. Yes. Even with this other property we we purchased for our, our co working space. Yeah. Before we you know we always want to bring everybody on and grow the wealth together. But we're yes. Like, let us do it first. If we fail, we fail. Yeah. If not, hey, it's great. Yeah. And then we'll present it over to you. For that's sure. That's how we've always been. That, that's, that's a good way said to too, do it. That's what I said, too. We can't have this brokerage and promote <sighs> Florida and yeah. have a property there ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a great benefit for you guys as well. Oh, absolutely. Nothing wrong with it absolutely. at all. You can't lose with real estate. No. Especially in a hot, a hot city like that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And so... I know Florida is the biggest one, but you're looking at Calgary. Is that the next move? Something like that? Uh, you know what? With, with Calgary, it's it's like it was like with Florida. So Florida came to be because a lot of people were asking us, saying, "Hey, yeah, uh, COVID's happening. I want to buy a property yeah. in Florida. I got a property. A there. lot of demand there." Nick and I were loud on our social media, like the yeah. mortgage guys. Let's let's call them. Let's ask them. Mm-hmm. And that's why we started Florida. So it was the same thing with Calgary. It was clients calling me saying, "Hey." I need to refi. Hey, I'm yeah. got pre-construction there. Yeah. And the thing with Calgary is 160,000 people from Ontario moved to Alberta last year alone. Wow. It was the wow, biggest. That's a lot. In Canadian history, is the biggest movement from tw- the age group of 25 to 30 year olds. Cost of living is too high. Here. It is. It is. Right yeah. now, as of today's date, you need $207,000 of household income to afford to live in Toronto. 158000 to live in Hamilton. Yeah. And wow. you know, I got friends out in Hamilton. Show yes. Hamilton. Yeah. Not the prettiest of the no. state. No. I got I, I to make over one hundred and sixty grand. Yeah. So Calgary is still in that, that affordable market. So that's why you have so many Ontarians moving there. Yes. Especially that younger demographic, For our sure. age group. Because it's like, yeah. what am I going to do here? Yeah. You can't buy you can't. a first It's so home. saturated. It's, yeah, you're saturated. Yeah. We have no demand. Oh, sorry, we have no supply, so yes. these, these prices yeah. are rising. Whereas over there, you know, your average condo is going from two hundred, three hundred thousand. For sure. Nice detached home, like I'm talking three thousand yes. square feet, three car Lots garage, of room. Seven hundred fifty grand. Yeah. And yeah, Florida's still cheap, but the beauty with Calgary is same currency. It is exactly that's where and you went over. And a lot less over. taxes as well. Mm-hmm. You know, land transfer tax over here. On a million dollars, land transfer is around sixteen thousand dollars. Okay. Over there, they have a property registration fee for a million dollar home. Yeah. Costs you four hundred fifty. I bucks. remember hearing this at the event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So wow. it's, it's just the affordability and what you could do. So yeah. Calgary, I I, I want to say no right now to the office. Yes. I don't think there is a need for it. Yeah. But I wanted to get licensed and for meet sure. with realtors and lenders because have that I'm not looking to attack that market. Yes. I'm looking to be that bridge. Same yes. like Florida. Florida, the, the American Americans are going to come to us for their mortgages. Yep. It's inevitable. We're going to be loud yep. just like we are here. 100%. But right now, we're just that bridge for Canadians, for the Canadians to purchase to get over. over there. Yeah. And that's what I want to do is I want to be the same thing as that bridge for the Ontarians to purchase over there. For sure. I got friends right now that are, that's like I said, those 13 deals. Yeah. It's all pre-construction that are coming up, to, yeah. uh, coming up for closing. Wow. So it's like they don't know anybody out there. Yeah. And they're going to trust you. They're, I'm right down the street from yeah. them. They'd rather meet with the guy that's here than exactly. have to try and figure it out over there. Yeah. I think that's it's so blindsided that way, too. That's It's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. And that's why, I was just, that's why I just called it on and said we got to go do it because I'm like, I don't see a big push for it yet here. Yeah. Maybe so not like, yet. Let let's for be sure. Like, let's be the pioneers for it. Yeah. I think it's great. You also you give that option too for those who want to move over into the, into the U.S. and those who might want to stay in Canada, yeah. keep the currency the same, and they have another option. Cheaper investment opportunity. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And a lot of investors too, like just add to your portfolio. Yeah. Again, it I'm does. looking at I'm looking at uh, triplexes for four hundred thousand okay. dollars. Wow. Not buying a triplex here for four hundred thousand. Oh no way. Yeah, they have low vacancy rent, uh, low vacancy there for yeah. anybody looking for rent. Yeah, there's a lot of immigrants moving in there. They're trying to yeah. develop tech, blue collar jobs. Yes, oil, a lot of tech there. Truck drivers, mm-hmm. all that, and they have nowhere to rent. Yeah, because again, there's no supply. There isn't. So it's like I'm gonna try and spend a million dollars here for try, for try and generate some income. Yeah. Whereas over there, you're already generating income because yeah, there's so your much. Your mortgage is so cheap. It's so little to put down, and then on top of it, you're making a great rental income. Wow! Wow! You can tell you know your stuff, man. You can tell you know your stuff. I eat, breathe, and shit yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome, Mike. So tell me, let, let's get into, into your, your advice now, okay? Yeah. So if, if a young, uh, young generation coming into the, into the broker space wants to be a mortgage agent or maybe just wants to invest, what's your first advice you give them? For the investment, I'd say look at, look at your long-term goal. And yeah. what I mean by that is that you know, especially in our market right now, it's, yeah. it's always going to be that one property. It's yeah. not like back in the day, you yeah. could spread that money across a couple. So why I'm saying look at that long-term goal, yeah. because even when I buy properties myself, yeah. I always look at a property that I'm okay to live in. 
Okay. And the reason I say that is because, again, real estate's never going to fail. No. But the market may fail. You may lose your job. That's fair. You never know it is. what's going to yeah. happen. You want to be happy mm-hmm. with that property that you're going to live in. Some yes. people say, no, you got to look at the ROI, this, that. Yeah, yeah. It's all great. But at the end of the day, yes. you want to be miserable that, again, yeah. you lost your job. Maybe this place is paid off. It's great. Yeah. But you want to be happy with it. So that's my first piece of advice. Okay. And my second is what I find now, again, with, with the RA group and this new group of uh, people looking to buy is they're looking for these fancy homes, these nice homes. It's not your forever home. Yeah. Again, it's either going to make you income. Yeah. Or it's for yourself to move into mm-hmm. and just set that goal. It's not going to be your forever home. It's don't yes. don't go look for the yes. four or five thousand square foot. Don't get home. too attached. Grab that little car. Yes. Grab that townhouse. Mm-hmm. Grab that semi detached. Mm-hmm. Grab that ugly place. Mm-hmm. If it's okay enough for you to live later yeah. on, it's okay. It's going to make you some great income. You know, I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking at properties in the outskirts. Like when I uh, was first starting to invest, I okay. was looking at St. Catharines in oh, Windsor. Wow. wow. Again, yeah, did yeah, I want to yeah. live there? Maybe, 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 maybe not, not. But the rental income was great. For sure. I was able to spend a lot less and make a lot more yeah. versus trying to buy in Woodbridge. For sure. I do use my end goal, Woodbridge, Toronto, of course. Yeah, but it's home. You're gonna, yeah, you're yeah. not going to go blow your load <laughs> yeah. on that. So, yeah, that's yeah. my investment is, is make sure it's it's reasonable. It makes sense for you. That's fair. And, uh, yeah, always do your research. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just to give you advice on that, why I looked at the St. Catharines, for example, mm-hmm. is that five major highways connecting. People oh, are like, oh okay. it's Brock University. Yeah. Yeah, but you look at West and you look at Guelph, they only have that one highway. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes no it's highway even connection. How much it's all about transportation. Yeah, it is. So yeah, always do your research as well. Yeah. And the other thing is don't be don't be scared from, you know, someone telling you no okay. in terms of down payment or affordability. There's always ways to, to work get around, around it and to get it done. Because okay. uh, that's what happens too all the time. And that's why I feel like we're successful with is that people yeah. just say no. It's like, oh, this guy's got fifty K of a down payment. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. he's got this much? No. Yeah. Work it. Work. You know. Don't don't listen to that first person. Yes. Says no. Find the yeah. right person. Don't stop. And there. Uh, yeah, just just don't stop. If wow. you have that goal, just just work towards it. Yeah, that's awesome. Great advice, man. Yeah, awesome. And so, I want to I want to hear from you. What's like your most memorable experience being a, a, a co-founder, a broker, or doing your own deals? Most memorable. Yeah, it's tough because you know you, you a have lot a, of moments. You have a lot of moments. Yeah. With it. You know, uh, the I still have the first check. Yeah, that we got three thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Wow! It sits. Uh, yeah, thank God for mobile deposit. Yeah. <laughs> you get to keep it. It, yeah. sits, it sits in a frame in my office, and uh, yeah, just as proud of it as, as yeah. anything else. You know that that Big first moment. that first check, but. Uh, Yes, I'd say it's multiple moments, you know. Yeah. February, again, because I told you about numbers and dates. Yeah, February yeah, 18th, yeah. that's when we incorporated March 3rd. We got wow. that, that incorporation binder. Nice. October 7th, we, um, uh-huh. we launched publicly. Yeah. So that was a huge moment for us. Uh, and then the little moments, you know, the our first uh, trip we went on was in Ottawa. Oh, yeah? Uh, that was the first conference we went to, yeah. No way. Yeah, it was in 2020 is uh, the Mortgage uh, Symposium. Nice. It's okay, let's, let's go. They had one in Toronto where we were like, yeah. we got to have fun at work. We want to go Let's, let's yeah. go to this one. Yeah. And that that's a pretty funny memory because I remember people would laugh at us at the conference because really? we went for five days. No way. We, we just want to experience. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Went to go check out some places, meet with <laughs> realtors. Went around, yeah. So we're at the conference. We're talking with other brokers. Like, oh, yeah. what did you guys fly in? And the guy's like, oh, I came in this morning and leaving tonight. Yeah. This is, I mean, they're like, thing. oh, we, we're here on Tuesday. He's like, Tuesday. He's like, what the hell are you going to do here? It's <laughs> And I know we want to explore. We want to venture yeah. out. So I'd say, yeah, the the, yeah. the best moments, I'd say, is just these little ones. It's, yeah. And, you know, the advice to that is just enjoy Enjoy for sure. the moments for sure. for sure. The little milestones. And for that's sure. why I keep that first check because yeah. obviously the deals are a lot bigger than that right now. But that's yeah. always like just remember where to you look came back from. At, where, exactly. You know, Don't keep, keep that ego. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. But that's I'd awesome. say another memorable one too is when Nick and I shot those uh, commercials. Yeah? It was, yeah. Yeah. It was it was fun. We were up at his cottage. Okay. A couple of days and just having fun with the commercials. Yeah. It was always uh, it was always a good time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Th- just to go to that, a similar idea, but I always remember past couple months you would post um i think it was like a like a market update yeah yeah those the rate update yeah. i just uh, i was thinking about it because i remember how informative like from a young person perspective someone who doesn't know a lot at a young age like friends of mine as well when they see that like i can't tell you how much knowledge you gain in a 30 second video of you explaining the market or yeah, you explaining how that. things are going through rather than trying to understand it our own because we don't understand that in school yeah. we don't you know we don't pick no, that no, up they, they don't teach you that no and uh yeah i'm happy you brought that up because yeah. even for our website uh if you go to the website yeah. you go to a lot of other mortgage brokers websites all about rates and this and that and just just trying to get you to buy a home mm. if you go to our website which i take pride in because i spent a lot of hours building it for out, sure I bet. Like the, the, the I knowledge bet. aspect of it is every product has 
and explain like I wrote out like almost wow. like a one page yeah one page on explanation it. Oh, here's of, first time home buying okay this one means to refi this one means yeah. to renew but then on top of it I wrote a script for all these advertorial videos like these little 30 second animated videos nice to your point like the yeah. ones that I do myself yeah. Yeah. that again explain what's TDS what's GDS exactly. what's the stress yes. test what, you know fix versus variable yes. rent versus buy so yeah. that's also a big thing I, I feel like you know we've been disruptors of is just teaching the client don't keep them stupid. for sure we have for a sure. whole learning tab that teaches you about all different aspects of it uh, i got a 16 page glossary i don't wow. want to throw terms at you in our yes. meeting yeah and you walk away and be like <laughs> what oh, did i, I just feel, yeah. i feel so stupid yeah. i feel so lost i want to yeah. empower people with buying for sure. property have them understand what yep. they're getting into that's awesome so that i think uh yeah that's that's been huge with the marketing as well yeah more so my approach that's always been my my approach is always the corporate guy yeah so it's a lot of my videos i just want to be quick and quick. informative what do yeah. we not learn in school i think that's awesome and i just and what i even tell my staff when they're doing the videos or talking with clients i'm like guys just remember they don't know as much yes, as you do we exactly. do this all day every we day we do it all day every day so you just, know in the back of your you know, head dumb it down a bit yes don't use acronyms like you know LTV. Don't yeah. loan to value. What yeah. does that mean? Yeah. Because again, you know, I say to them, I'm like, something happens with your plumbing, your yeah. toilet. You call a plumber. Yep. You know, you need to do your taxes. You call an accountant. I yep. say, you need to do their mortgage. You're calling us. So we're mm -hmm. the experts. Mm -hmm. Just don't assume that they're going to be the experts. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do with our marketing as yeah. well. Is just assume that the clients are not the experts. I think we had a video go out about that yesterday. Yes. Like, yeah. There's no dumb yeah. questions. No. No. Ask us away. I yeah. love them. I love explaining. I love teaching too. Yeah. I think that's why I even want to grow with it as well. Is that for sure? Go into that teaching and mentoring side yeah. with this because I just love talking about it and love yeah. teaching people and love seeing them achieve understand their goals. it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a really cool side of it. Not a lot of companies. I don't know if it's they say they don't have the time for it or they just they can't provide that better understanding. Whereas when I see you guys do it, it's just it's like it's wow. It's, yeah. It's, it's really good. Awesome. Yeah, because that's, that's what it is, educating the clients. Yeah. I can show you 30 different rates, but what does that rate mean? Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? Everybody always tries to get the sale on the lowest rate. But yeah. Sometimes the lowest rate's not the best. It doesn't, it's not as beneficial as no, another rate. No, there might be a better product out there. Yeah. Or why should you pay a bit more? Yeah. You know, even I'm going over with a client for flips. I said, we could close this property quick with a private mortgage. Yes, it's interest only, but there's so many different ways to work around it. Mm -hmm. To actually generate a higher ROI than me taking it to the bank, waiting 30 yep. days to close. Yeah. This document, that document. So, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's, that's what we're trying to show people. It's not just about the rates, not just yep. about the product. Yep. There's so much more to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's awesome. And so, I guess I, I want to understand from from your point of view, how much has has like the the social media aspect side of things for the company and for you, like helped you guys in, in a collaboration standpoint or even in just an engagement standpoint with it's, buyers it's, customers. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's the the main the main focus. And wow. know, going back to those dates that I was talking about, mm -hmm. the reason why we publicly launched October seventh is because. One, we obviously wanted to make sure the back end for the mortgages we knew how to do, like yeah. at the bank, so that was easy for me. Yeah. But we wanted to make sure the website was built. All We, we had three months worth of social media content out wow. already. Wow. So that's, that's why we lot. took yeah. almost seven, eight months to build that out. Yeah. Uh, because we wanted to make sure we were prepared. Hit the yeah. ground running. We've done TV ads, radio ads, sponsored Ooh. ads, every, any type of marketing, you name it. Yes, podcasts, we've done. But everything. It's, it's huge because, like I said, it's, it's all about having a voice nowadays everybody's on their phones yes and our target audience is that uh, you know gen x gen z for sure millennia, uh, millennials yep you know the boomers they got their bankers yep. it's fine they're gonna go there but the the gen x or the uh the millennials are looking at their phone yeah you know i had somebody that was at my office today she's like i want to come to you for my mortgage simply just because i showed my husband yeah. your videos and it seemed informative what you're talking about you know i, I could feel the passion yeah and the the family vibe from all your other videos. Yeah. We want to work with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Uh, so the social media is huge uh, for that aspect. The other for aspect sure. it's huge for is that the uh, mortgage brokering space yeah. always has a bit of a negative connotation to it. Okay. People think, oh, you can't go to the bank, you have to go to a broker. Yeah. But it's yeah. not like that. Yeah. I got the same rates and products the bank ha yeah. has. Yeah. So again, we're just trying to change that, that hey, it's that not, mentality. You know, the 70s where mm -hmm. the brokers or credit unions, we offer the AAA rates and that service. Wow. I worked at the bank. The service wasn't there. Yeah. I had you so would many know. other things yeah. I was doing. Yeah. You know, I wasn't getting too ba ba back to as fast exactly. as I am now. Yeah. With the mortgage. I got a team for that. Every three yeah. days, you get a touch point from us. For sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, so social media is huge. And it was also huge for collaborating, like you said, with these realtors. Our mm -hmm. concept 
with what would it cost was simple. It was every other mortgage broker out there was just hitting up realtors saying, hey, wow. send me deals, let's yeah. work together, whatever. Yeah, let's do something. That. Yeah. Nick and I said, no, hey, yeah. here's our podcast. I'd awesome. love to have you on. Yeah. Some people came, have we had chat. them on, didn't even know what Spark was yeah. and what we did. <laughs> wow. We talked about it after and we still didn't poach them for business. Wow. Let the podcast go out, give them the clips yeah. and then have them in our office. Hey, this is yes. what we do. We'd love to work with yes. you if you'd like that. I think taking that approach, not just it going, is. Like the, not like the drill up. marketing is great, yeah. but you're not just straight up, hey, yeah. you're a realtor, Al, you know, yeah, can we, let's work together. No, you want to provide something to them as well exactly and it comes back down to our hospitality and service for sure and that's why the marketing is huge that's where we're at today and that's where we're able to grow as for much sure as we can. the marketing is just as important as the underwriting yeah putting the deals through because a yep. lot of those deals came from, from that, that marketing it is it's a big chain it's a big chain yeah like it's awesome like you know go to conferences and yeah i walked up to a guy about uh, his product and he's like hey yeah you're, you're yeah. From spark yeah so you know your you. stuff you know it's, it's there you get it's already that recognition it's that yeah brand recognition you know yeah. that's why exactly the pin and green and yeah people, i love the it diamond in people's that. heads yeah uh you know you know apple doesn't put apple on any products it's just no. the apple exactly microsoft has the four squares they don't yes. say microsoft anymore exactly you know android's a little robot i want to yep. be for mortgages just remember the, the for sure the diamond 100 yeah. percent. i love that i love that from a tech standpoint i get that yeah, yeah that's cool awesome so tell me mike uh, the biggest question we love to ask is is personally to you as a as a founder in your own personal life your lifestyle how do you balance between the two what's what's the biggest thing that allows you to to feel you know comfortable balancing your lifestyle at work and, and outside of work for me uh and you know my everybody in my office and family can attest to is technology yeah yeah i wow. think I, I think that's another step that put us ahead is the technology really it's okay. just embrace it because wow. i can go to calgary and yes. i can still see where my files are at yeah i can still see where my calendar it's all at, interconnected all that like now like i was telling you i'm looking actively yeah. for an yeah. executive assistant for myself because i need yeah. that extra step but for someone that can't afford yeah to bring someone on right now okay balance and lifestyle it comes out to technology utilize it in the good way yeah right yeah, yeah yeah for sure so like you know for my calendar i use calendly because yeah. it used to be you hit me up for a mortgage and be like, okay i'll um you know are you free at this time this yeah, time no yeah. i'm free here now yeah. calendly it's a link they click it it integrates my calendar wow it's like i always say choose a time that works best for you yeah here's my calendar so that's that's the one thing i say is is definitely the right technology wow um it, because I even do it, even I get work with my coach. I even do yeah. it right down to dinner time with family. Wow. Uh, hang out with friends. I yep. have everything scheduled, scheduled in there. Because if you don't have a schedule, you're just going to fill those blocks and you're just going to blow in the wind. Yeah, you won't so even that's, remember. That's, yeah, so yeah. that's what it is. Just scheduling, using that technology. For sure. Uh, that's the best way to, to, to have that balance. Wow. And the right people around you, of course. Yeah, for sure. Back to the team. For sure. But um, yeah, on a personal level, I, yeah. I, I give everything to technology wow. for sure. I've you never got CRM. that. That's, that's, yeah. that's awesome. You never got that? Yeah. yeah. Well, even our CRM, it's like, how am I going to keep up with all these clients? You know, yeah. I have it every Friday. It sends out an yeah. automated email to my referral sources. Wow. Hey, Al, thanks for sending over Nick. Yeah. His mortgage is currently in this stage. We last contacted him this day. Yeah. Here's where we're following up with him. Okay. You know how many deals I got in the pipeline? For me yeah. to call oh, all those realtors, dude. but that's what they want. They want communication. Yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we still yeah. give them that, that B2B sure. communication. For sure. But for a file that's in limbo because we're waiting for documents, yeah, you they're can. happy that every Friday they know at 4 o'clock they look at their phone yeah. and they see that. And I use that the same for myself. Automations. Yeah. yeah. Leads come in. Um, any messages I have to send out. Wow. Uh, technology for commitments, anything I put together. Yeah. I'm always, always looking to adapt to new technologies. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great to have that, that mentality to adapt to it rather than to think of it so negatively. Yeah, a lot of people think of it negatively. Yes. They're scared yeah. of it. Yeah. I got a little bit of you know some older people yeah. in my office oh, I'm trying sure. to help yeah. them out. But I'm just showing them saying like look it's not a scary thing. Like there's it a lot is. of benefits yeah. to it. Like use it to your advantage. Yeah, use it to your yeah. advantage. Like I said, I traveled and I'm on my phone. Yeah. I could use it, do a commitment for you, for sure. answer emails, hop on a call. Wow. So that's where yeah, I'm happy to cool. get that answer before. Yeah, yeah but that's that's my yeah. lifestyle balance is technology helps me in a huge way. Love it, Mike. Thank you. I mean, hey, we'd love to have you on anytime. Yeah, yeah hopefully no, in a year time. We, we love doing like a, a year a year checkup and we do this thing where we could see the, the progress and, and the things you've said now to next year. Yeah, so see what's changed. Time. Yeah, it's yeah cool. so definitely I'll have a different balance. Hopefully yeah. <laughs> everything goes well with these interviews 100%. and I find myself that assistant. 100%. So, uh, I think yeah, you will. I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be a lot for, uh, more, uh, more developed, I guess, in that, in no, that balance. No, for sure. That's great. Love it. Thank you for coming. Yeah, we appreciate no, thank it. Thank you, man. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks man. for having me. Anytime. Lifestyle Balance Podcast. <laughs>